Right, okay, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to today's video. And today, we're going to be taking apart this Xbox One S to actually replace, well, swap its HDMI ports because this one's got a, a rather nasty break on the output port. Now, unfortunately, we can't actually get any replacement ports for these things as yet. They just don't exist in the marketplace. There's no knackered ones. Uh, and yeah, frankly, so it only leaves us the one option really, and that is to swap the input HDMI port for the output ones, because unfortunately the old Xbox One ports don't fit, and they can't really be modified to fit. So, you don't really have much of an option. You can either have no Xbox, or an Xbox that works, but you can't use the input. And let's face it, does anybody really use the input? I know I don't. So, you know, anyway, that was... Uh, you know, this was sent up by uh, another repair shop, and uh, you know that was the option put to them. You know, we can either swap it or not do anything with it, and uh, the option was taken to swap it. So that's what we're going to do today. So here is where we are. So I have taken the base off this thing already. I hate taking the base off these. This is the first one I've actually had, and I don't know. Maybe it'll get easy with time. But it was a real b and um, basically using one of these. This is a nice Sesmo, and without this, it would have been impossible. You try and attack it with these plastic pry tools, and you will waste your time. And as you can see, that one broke and it was absolute crap. So, if you haven't got an nice Sesmo and you have an Xbox One S you want to take apart, this is going to prove invaluable to you. So, let's show you. Well, I've actually already got the base off. I started and then realised I actually probably want to record this. So here's the base. That, of course, sits on the back. So what happens is, for those of you who don't know, this here, there is a basically a warranty seal here, and that, that hole there sits over this nub. So you remove the warranty seal and all you see is this plastic square bit here. So it's basically just a big security tab. So you've got to get the ISSMO in behind, just up here, and pry it in towards the case and pry it down and then it actually just pops over and then you can get down the actual side between the white plastic and the grey plastic base and just get in and just pop these clips do the same at the other side and then the front you can literally just sort of lift forward and, and pop it off so you know a bit of a pain in the ass particularly when you consider that getting into the actual original Xbox One wasn't all that difficult. It was okay. It was all right. So it's a bit of a bit of a disappointment there. To be honest, it feels like a bit of a um, what they call it a more complicated procedure than it really needs to be. So I got the base off and then thought, actually, probably want to record this. So let's have a look then. So how how do we get in here? So I've actually not looked at anything with regards to getting these things apart, so I may be doing this the long way around. So there's some green screws here, some green screws. So let's remove the green screws. I have a T, I think it's a T9, T9R. These actually don't look like security torques, but it's these just like standard torques, so, you know, T9s will suffice. So, green screws. Come on down. So those are the green screws out. So I'm presuming here, but like I say, I haven't looked at any sort of teardown videos or anything for these, so I'm probably giving myself more pain than necessary. But does that mean then that this top will come off? No, no, it doesn't. <laughs> I'd say that would have been uh, too much like easy work, wouldn't it? Okay, so if that top doesn't come off. Does it come off? Let me remove the rest of these torque screws. So, as you can see, we just buzzing through these. Ah, oh, dear me. Let's try that again. So this is the base, remove these, these will be around the APU, that's fun. Uh, 
Pokey cokey. So that's those removed. Can I get that off now? Do you think? Does it come off now? You have to give it a bit of a wiggle. No. Oh, no. Well. There you go. It's wanting to separate that at the back, look. There we go. Excellent. Okay. So there all we did was we just got the the edges there and just lifted them out and then the whole thing just came off, so that's quite cool. So screws along the top. Doesn't appear there are any, which is quite nice. This top bit seems to want to come off. Uh, something appears to be stopping it. Oh no, just give it a pull. And the top comes off. Fantastic. So what happens now then? <laughs> That's really quite cool. So it's actually all numbered. So we've got zero one fan, zero two disc optical disc drive with a little master chief on the bottom. Have you been able to see that? It's quite cool. See him in the light there. Master chief protecting the uh, the disc drive. <laughs> Cool. It's almost as if they know we're going to be in here at some point. So, O3 power supply, marked internal power supply, and O4 hard disk drive, and each part is labelled up. How lovely! Wow, okay, that's that's really pretty sweet. So, let's go for O1 fan then, eh? So, first of all, what we're going to do is remove this IR board, which is held in seemingly by four Torx bolts. It's only held in by three, of course, on the original Xbox One. Right. So I'm sure that will just pull clear now, will it? Does indeed. Fantastic. So. labelled number four. So I kind of feel I'm doing this in the wrong order. Probably I'm doing this in the wrong order. Oh well, fam. So, those two front plastic screw mounting holes are there. They're slightly different in design, so the pegs come through here and clip, so you just push the, the clips through and then lift the peg out. Okie dokie. Don't know if that means the I can't believe the fan's going to come out that easily. This drive. Mm. Okay, that's a bit weird. I'm trying to work out how the hell all this is held in. Okay, so we've gone for the hard disk first. Okay, that just lifts up and pops out, which then leaves our signal and SATA cables for the optical disk drive, which then lifts out. I wonder why they've numbered them 1, 2, 3, 4, when they obviously don't come out in that order. Power supply seemingly just lifts up, it does, and unclips. There you go, it's quite a, a neat little module there, isn't it? It's quite nice. And then we're just down to the board, which, bearing in mind we've got all the screws out. Ah, nearly, nearly missed something there. So this thing here, uh, d -d -d -d, looks like the wireless control board now. See, yeah, it is Wi-Fi MAC address on the bottom corner there. I'll probably blur that out, just in case that's visible. So there's three screws instead of the two previously. The good news is, though, this time you don't have that annoying ribbon to forget to plug back in. The board just interfaces directly with a with a nice clip on the main board there. Okay, that seemingly now should be it. This thing should just lift out. So I'm just going to get a hold of it. The screws are definitely all out. Okay, so I just realised. 
I was just about to admit defeat, and there's a pl there's a, a metal clip above this USB port here. So I'm just gonna try and lift that. There we go. Ah, it'll come out now. It'll come out now. So I'm just gonna lift this thing forward. There we go. Happy days. Excellent. Okay. So actually, once you've got the um, the base off. Getting the base off is the hardest part. Once you've actually got the base off, the thing just comes apart really quickly, really easily. Once you realise that bloody clip's there. So, I'm going to unhook the fan. I'm going to flip this over. And we're going to remove the X clamp. Now then, removing X clamps. Because this is something that a lot of people seem to get wrong and have done since the days of the 360. And the thing to remember here is that the X clamp is not the work of the devil. The X clamp is not responsible for anything like the Red Ring of Death or um, what was the other one? The White Light of Death or anything like that. The X clamps are not the problem. They're not. Don't replace them with bolts. They're not the issue. They never were. They never will be. So, what we're going to do is we're just going to pry the edge of these clumps up with the end of a screwdriver. Okay, so you've just got to work it back and forth. If you're wondering how to remove an X clamp, of course, then I will link a video in the description which will tell you the exact procedure you can use to actually remove these safely without risking damaging the board. Well worth a watch. Um, as I say, it's showcased on the original Xbox One, but it's completely applicable here. And we'll stand you in good stead. So, I'll pop that in the description, hopefully. All being well. So, the heatsink looks to be exactly the same as the old one. I'm not sure if there's any size difference or not, but generally speaking, it seems to be the same. Okay, and voila. Okay, so we're out. So we have we have the motherboard right there. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. One Xbox One S mainboard. So we can now go to work and you know actually get some swapping doing here. So essentially, what's happened is the uh, the comb there in the end of that port, and I'm not sure you'll see it. Um, and I'm not sure I've got a light source. Well, can maybe try and show you on the uh, on the desk. Maybe. Oh, so I'll try and flip it around. So. Auto focus just isn't playing today at all. But you can probably tell this camera's bloody awful on this phone, it really is. Um, but essentially, you can probably just about see the one, the HDMI port on the right, this one here is looking quite nice. You can see the left hand edge of that one there is looking a bit sorry for itself. So we're going to swap these two ports over because unfortunately we can't get hold of spares full of no money so we can't change it out we've just got to do a swap. So that's what we're going to do. So join us in a sec boys and girls we'll get it on the table we'll get some capture running and uh, we'll show you how to swap and reinstall a HDMI port on an Xbox One S. Right ladies and gentlemen so here we are and uh, we actually have the board underneath our microscope camera as it stands at the moment and it's all looking really rather cool. So that is the top of the damaged port itself the one to the uh, left of it uh, no, not that one and that one there is the one we are going to be uh, well swapping it over with. So as I say we can't actually find new ports of these for love no money, they just don't exist in the marketplace at the moment so, surely you're better off having no input and an output than no output at all. So, you know, 
unfortunately as much as I would love to replace this port for the guy and as much as it pains me to sort of like you know as much as it pains me to actually do this job half arsed you know and actually you know leave the, the Xbox somewhat hobbled isn't particularly my choice but at the moment it's the only option I could really offer the guy so you know I, I felt sorry for him but it's about the only thing you can do so all we're doing there we're just applying some flux to the area of the ports so we're gonna do them both so you can see there's plenty of flux there and its neighbor there next job is to flip this over and apply some flux there too. So, I'm just going to move you around a little bit so you can see what we're doing. So this is the bottom side of the good HDMI port. So those are the ground holes there. These are the ones we are going to want to flux up. So we're going to flux those. Oop, you can actually see the other one, can't you? You were looking at the bad port, so that's the uh, okay. So we fluxed those two, and then moving right along to the bad port, because of course we're removing both of these HDMI ports. So of course, you know, when these things are available as a replacement, then I will obviously endeavour to make sure that this guy does get a good port but for now the only option I've got to give the guy was to swap it so <coughs> we have good HDMI port and bad HDMI port now all paired up okay and we prepared ready for some soldering jobs so what we're going to do is we are going to take our fat soldering iron tip now then, of course, at the moment, we're just going to swap these two ports over. Hopefully at some point in the not too distant future, these ports are going to be available in the marketplace for you to buy and actually replace the bad port with a no good one. So you can have both your input and your output working together, which of course is what we all want, yeah? But for now, it's the only option. So, <laughs> what we're going to do is we're going to remove both of these together. Now then, much of this process should be relatively similar. So, unlike, uh, you know, so when you can buy a new port, if you're watching this at a point in the future from today when you can actually buy a new HDMI port, then that will be absolutely fantastic. All you need to do is drop the bad port that you've got an issue with that's damaged and then skip a little bit to the next part of the video where we install the new port. Okay. But for now, if you're having to do the same as me and swap one, then you're going to want to watch the whole thing. So, what we're going to do is we're going to apply some leaded solder to these feet. Okay, so these are ground holes, these are the locating pins for the port. So, we're going to work this back and forth. Cause all four pins on both ports. So, the reason we do this, in case you haven't seen any of our other HDMI replacement videos, is twofold. One, it dilutes down the lead-free stuff, which hopefully reduces slightly the temperature required to reflow the solder, which makes it easy to get it out. And secondly, what it actually does is it gets some heat into the ground plane that these things sit through. They're based on a big ground plane, which acts as a big heat sink. So, of course, as soon as we go near it with the hot air, it starts to want to try to pull heat away and out of the board which is a bit of a problem because you know we're trying to work heat into the board so of course if you can get a head start by just putting a little bit of leaded solder in there then you know job is a good one so I actually want to put a little bit more on this left hand side of the good port so Right, so we're going to do exactly the same with this as we did with 
the original Xbox One. And what we're going to do is we're going to stand the motherboard up ever so slightly to give us a bit of room underneath when we drop these ports out. Okie doke. So we've got a bit of height there. I don't think you guys are going to get any benefit from this. I don't think you're high enough. To see this, it's going to be a problem, isn't it? I'm going to try and get you a little bit higher if I can. Promising anything. I'm not promising anything. Oh, but hopefully. Hopefully, it's going to have some bearing on what you can see. Some zoom uh, otherwise. So, the tricky thing we're going to have here is the plastic dowel pins that locate through the board. You can see these melting, but let's see. Hopefully, they're made of some high temperature thermoplastic. Could maybe pop a bit of captain over there, but uh, we'll see. So, we're going to go in with the air one. So, this is 400 and 90 degrees of air. That's 100 litres of airflow per minute. Now then, the pins on this HDMI port on the board side look exactly the same as they did on the original Xbox One. So they're quite long and thin so you're going to need to make sure you put a decent amount of heat across the center between the two sets of ground locating holes to make sure that these actually flow properly you can see there the front dowel on the left hand side of this as we're looking is looking a bit sorry for itself but there's really anything I can do about that So we're just going to work this back and forth. It's wanting to go. So the port has moved out on the left hand side. Okay, so the port has just dropped out. Okay, we'll get you a closer look at that in a sec. That's the good port. We'll get you a, a closer look at that shortly. So now we need to remove a uh, bad one. So the front dowels did melt slightly, but not not to the point that it's going to become a problem. It was just the ends that sort of melted a little bit. But 
they'll be fine. So, I'm just going to apply a dab more flux to these ground locating pins. So, I'm going to go ahead now and repeat the process. So there should already be a decent degree of heat in the board now. This this second part I would expect to come out a little bit easier. So I'm having to hold the uh, the wand at an angle because I'm underneath the microscope camera. Normally I prefer to be straight above it. But, uh, When I can get a kink tip. That's going to make this job a lot easier underneath the microscope for me. So, we're just working back and forth now. This is the damaged port, of course. We're going to wait for that port to move. At the moment, it hasn't done. So the key here is patience. Okay, I'm going to have to move the uh, the scope out of the way so I can get directly above this port. So unfortunately, there's not a lot I can do about that. But I will see you guys in a sec when this thing is off the board. Right, okay, so we have our HDMI ports now out of our board and those are the pins right there. So. As you can see, everything is now looking uh, really rather nice. And okay, so all those pads survived intact. Just want a bit of tin. Same on that side. So our headers are looking pretty nice. So we just need our HDMI ports. And we'll of course need to clean that board up, which we will do. Our HDMI ports now. So this is the knackered one, so you can see here, look at that. Ouch. Don't look too pretty, does it? Oh, dear me. Yeah, Xbox One S, HDMI port. I don't know what's happened to that. You can quite clearly tell it's had a wallop. So here is what it should look like, of course. This is the one from the input side. That's the one that's going to be going on our output side. So let's just hope they don't break that one, because if they break it now, it's going to be going in a cupboard for the foreseeable. Hopefully, no, hopefully nobody's going to go break that, so... Jobs are good, and as you can see, all our pins are looking rather nice and straight. There, no problems there. Same on the other port. That one matters, because it's knackered. But you can see there, everything's nice and straight. We're all looking rather nice. So let's get our motherboard back in here. J8A1 is the output side of the HDMI circuit. So there we go. So what do we do? Well, put some more flux in place for a kickoff. And we're going to do the same on the other side as well. Because we are going to reinstall both ports. We may as well for now. So, what we're going to do is we're going to get our solder. We'll get our leaded solder here. And we're just going to touch both the ground plane holes and the pads themselves up with some leaded solder. Probably got a bit much on there to be fair, but 
the beauty is if you get a bit much on there it does just come off all we're looking to do here is just tin tin those up and we'll do the same on the other side at the end of the day you could leave that port out there's no need to actually reinstall the damaged port um, the only reason we're going to do it here is purely just to make sure that you know there's no holes in the back of the case that somebody could put something in for all I know this guy might have young children running about the place stick things in there so those are all nicely tinned up now and we're good to go and start installing our new port so what we're going to do is if some of you will have noticed on the legs of the previous H well, of the HDMI pots we've removed there's some tin whiskers around there from the crappy old solder there so we're going to go and clean those up now so in order to do that we're just going to get a bit of desolder braid on the legs of the HDMI ports this is going to be tricky to do under, under the camera so probably cut this once we've cleaned them up and come back to it we've tidied up the uh, the legs now so there's no excess solder on any of those and we've also tidied up the plastic dowels underneath so they're not really required to be honest you know there's plenty of reinforcement where the, the legs are soldered so that's absolutely fine so we're not too worried about those so all we need to do now is make sure of course that we get these back in the right place because that would be a disaster wouldn't it if we ended up putting them back where we took them off of so, J8A1 is where the good port is going to go, and J8A1 is just here. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to do here essentially what we do with the with the original Xbox Ones, and what we're going to do. we're going to do here is we're going to apply some what's it what's it we're going to apply some heat to that particular header there we're going to drop the port through the hole so to do that we get the port if you watch our Xbox one HDMI port replacement tutorial you know exactly what we're doing the nice thing is, is that this particular port here has a bit more clearance underneath so you can actually get right in the edge rather than having to stick the uh, the points of the tweezer blades in the actual port itself you can just get it by top and bottom which is quite nice so we're just going to apply some more flux and we are going to get some hot air for 90 degrees at 100 litres of airflow per minute as before and we're going to start reworking the area so we're going to get some heat into the uh, ground holes the solder is going to sink through them slightly when it gets hot enough and then all we're going to do we're going to offer our HDMI port up plonk it through the holes Make sure it's seated nice and flat, and the job should be a good one. So we can see there now that this is getting nice and shiny. This should be more or less ready now to accept our port. So we're going to roughly get it in place, drop it through, hold it flat. That should be okay, so we're just going to check that here. So that's the port there. These are the HDMI pins just behind it. 
So we're just going to check off camera, make sure this is flat to the board and everything's sat where it should do. It's looking pretty good. So I'll just show you there on camera. Just needs to be finally soldered, but you can see there the pins are nicely aligned and flat. So that's cool. So that's the first side done. So all we need to do now is put the other side back in. It really annoys me putting knackered ports back in boards, but at the moment there's not really a lot we can do. <coughs> so we're going to do the same. This side we're going to get hold of. Hold of the port. I'm going to do exactly the same this side. Oops. We're going to want some fume extraction, that's what we're going to want. Okay, so this is going shiny now. As I say, you know, from doing the first side, get plenty of heat into the board. So it's just about ready for us to offer things up. So, of course, the impact of the, uh, of the damage to the bad port actually broke off a portion of the front legs. So the front leg this side so it was sat slightly squiffy. It probably is still sat slightly to one side, but as long as everything lines up and it appears to do, not too worried. So all that's left to do now is resolder the pads. So we're going to flip this round. I'm going to move you. So this is the port on the bad side. Just gonna try and get you a little closer to the action. So as you can see, everything lines up there. So we're gonna change our well, in fact, no, I'll tell you what we'll do. Before we do that, we'll do the opposite side and we'll do the ground holes. Okay, so we just had to retension the uh, the scope there. We've done that now. So as before, I'm gonna put some flux on there. So this is the bad side. This is the bad side. So I'm just gonna apply some. Fresh leaded in there. And that's just going to flow these joints nicely. So those are the bad side. These are two on the good. Okay. Okie doke. So those are the ground holes prepared. And those should be fine. So now all we need to do is flip it back right side up and do the data pins. So this one here I believe you're looking at is the bad side. Indeed. So those are the those are the pins are there. J7A1 or input. So we are going to change our soldering iron tip to the fine tip. And we're going to apply some flux to the rear of these pins. Fantastic. So, 
we're going to do is we're just going to make sure that each of these pins is flat to its corresponding pad and soldered into place. So what we do at first is we push the pins down onto the pad and then we touch pin and pad together with the iron which just encourages everything to mate up hopefully So this is the bad side, so yeah, this isn't as crucial as the good side, but even so, uh, where's my brush gun? a quick clean off Let's get rid of any unsightliness I can go around and give this a proper thorough going over before we put it back together of course We just want to make sure the biggest part of the crap is up and out of the way. Okay. What is that? Okay. Okay, those are all soldered in place now, so now the only thing left to do is do a good port. And this is exactly the same carry on. So, first thing is just to push down each pin to its corresponding pad. To make sure both surfaces are mated. Nudge that one over a bit too far to one side there, so... Just get connected. Uh, 
Okay, and then what we're going to do is going to go around and touch pin and pad. Okay. Final job. Give this a quick whiz over with some IPA. And to be honest. We are more or less done here, so the other thing we want to do then is give the pins on this side of the port the nudge test. Okay, so I'll go around and give this a final clean shortly, but uh, as we can see there, and that's our, our board there, so we're going to give these the quick nudge test. Okay, and all those don't nudge, so that's cool. So, we're all good there. These don't really matter, but you know. These are buggered. Oh, that one does move a bit. In fact, I think that's the, that's the pad moving slightly. Those two there, why not? I'm pretty sure it was the pad, but... Let's face it, there's nothing going in this port anyway. But you don't want anything waggling about if you can at all help it. So those should be fine now. Okay, those are all good. It didn't really matter with those ones, those were solely to sort of like keep them in place just in case somebody does try putting something in there. But to be honest, look at the state of the port, why the hell would you even try, sir? But you don't want, you know, anything. Potentially going in there and mucking the pins up, do you, sir? 
does just make sense just to make sure that they are indeed nicely soldered in place. Those there will just pop a dab of IPA across the back of. These are the output sides again of course. And that's that ladies and gentlemen. So we have our board with our HDMI swapped and soldered into position. So all we'll do now is we will clean the bottom side of the board because that's looking rather disgusting. Get this back together and we'll test it. So join me in a sec boys and girls and uh, we'll see if this works. Right again okay, ladies and gentlemen so our Xbox One S is back together. So let's start this up and let's see what happens. So you can see there we have the white light. Hopefully we're going to get some display. And there we go. We have display. So what do we do there then? Well unfortunately for now at least the 1S HDMI ports are a bespoke solution. They're not identical to the ones in the older Xbox One which basically means they're like a rocking horse shit to find. In fact I couldn't find any and I searched all over. Even China. You know suppliers in China couldn't get hold of them anywhere. So it would appear that these things just aren't in the wild. So unless you can find a broken one and get lucky um, but even then broken Xbox One S is going to be going for a bit of money. So for the time being the only option we had was to swap the bad port on the output for the good port on the input so yeah you can't use any of the fancy media features on the input but at least you know you can use your Xbox 360 sorry your Xbox 360 your Xbox one once again and as you can see there now you know that's up and running so I'm just gonna try and sync a controller to it okay so that's my controller flashing away Let's see if we can sync the uh, yes, just to make sure that's working. They see each other by the looks. Slow blinking, and there we are. So if we can go to Blu-ray, I'm not going to play too much of this because this is a copyright strike. But <laughs> yep. Oh God, there you go. Go away. Oh my God, what have I done? How do you stop this bloody thing? <laughs> Quit. There we go. So. I'll probably blur that out. But um, yeah, as you can see there, it's all working really rather nicely. So we swapped to the bad port for the good one and vice versa. We've installed the bad one for now. Um, you know, until such time comes that we can get new ones, we can replace the input one. For now, that's going to have to suffice. So thank you very much for watching, ladies and gentlemen. And hopefully you enjoyed this vid and you found it useful. Um, you know, like I say, if you're watching this at some point in the future, when the One S ports are readily available, and I'm sure it won't take too long before they are, it's just going to be a case of waiting for them to come out of warranty, you know, and start to filter into independent repair, and as soon as the demand is there, I'm sure those lovely Chinese um, electronics geniuses will be knocking up clone ports faster than you can click your fingers, which, let's face it, we could have done with today, but, you know, it's just a case of waiting for it. So. You know, we swapped, we swapped the ports, and uh, for now at least, it's got us back up and running. So, as I said before, ladies and gentlemen, if you've enjoyed this, then please remember to rate, comment, and subscribe to the you know the channel. We've over 60 odd videos on there now, all of this kind of thing. So, uh, if you are watching this at some point in the future, as I was saying before, where the ports are readily available, you know, there's no need to remove both ports; just remove the knacker on, and you know swapping the the new one that you've bought but for now if you do face an Xbox One S with a broken port you're just gonna have to kind of uh, you know give the option to swap it so you can at least use it for the time being uh, you know that gets people back up and running uh, and maybe do them a deal in future if they do come back for the input port replacing but to be honest I don't know of anybody that uses the input port I really don't know I, to be honest with the One S I didn't know I've not really looked into them much I actually thought that Microsoft might have taken the opportunity to remove it um, you know a bit like they backed out on Kinect and bo you know boxing Kinect with each and every device I thought they might have backed out on the media features a little bit but um, you know no seemingly not so the input still has a place in the Xbox One and thankfully it does because if it doesn't 
we'd have been stuffed here this afternoon but it does and uh, and we have a port so thank you very much for watching this evening ladies and gentlemen you've been fantastic i've been andy paul as usual any comments questions or whatever they happen to be pop them in the comments below we always get round to them if, if we can and um i will see you on the next vid in the not too distant future so for me it's bye bye for now Many thanks for watching then ladies and gentlemen, hopefully you've enjoyed this video, if you have then why not check out these recommendations below. Also, please remember to comment, rate and of course subscribe to the channel if you found this useful. We've plenty more content on there and there's lots more to come.